are users actually safe? Is Facebook being safe? Senator, I think Facebook is safe. I use it and my family use it and all the people I love and care about use it all the time. Why should we trust Facebook to make the necessary changes? We have made a lot of mistakes in running the company. Do you think the average consumer understands what they're signing up for? I don't think that the average person likely reads that whole document. The Facebook founder and CEO taking the hot seat for the first time, facing tough questions from over 40 U.S. senators. One of the primary concerns, Facebook's growing role in our elections. What is Facebook doing to prevent foreign actors from interfering in U.S. elections? One of my top priorities in 2018 um, is to get this right. One of my greatest regrets in running the company is that we were slow in identifying the Russian information operations in 2016. We expected them to do a number of more traditional cyber attacks, which we did identify and notify um, the campaigns that they were trying to hack into them, but we were slow at identifying the type of, of new information operations. Swapping out his signature gray t-shirt and jeans for a suit, Zuckerberg remained stoic, sitting calmly for nearly five hours. We've seen the apology tours before. Your user agreement sucks. <laughs> The two days of congressional hearings called as a result of that controversial Cambridge Analytica data breach. Is Facebook keeping track of your phone calls and your text messages? Many now questioning whether their information is truly safe on the social network. Cambridge Analytica reportedly breached the profiles of tens of millions of users. The millennial billionaire first arrived in Washington on Monday, meeting privately with lawmakers and dodging questions from reporters. Mr. Zuckerberg, are you doing enough to protect your users? This week, 87 million Facebook users are receiving a notice on their feeds, informing them their personal data was shared with the political consulting firm. During the hearing, Zuckerberg took personal responsibility for the social network's failure to safeguard users' privacy. That was a big mistake, and it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. I think Mark Zuckerberg's going to sleep a lot better tonight than he did last night. He came in sounding well-prepared, knowledgeable. He certainly owned up to his mistakes, which is an important thing to do. Zuckerberg admitting Facebook has been used to spread fake news and hate speech. It's clear now that we didn't do enough to prevent these tools from being used for harm as well. There are a great many Americans who I think are deeply concerned that Facebook and other tech companies are engaged in a pervasive pattern of bias and political censorship. Uh, there have been numerous instances with Facebook. In May of 2016, Gizmodo reported that Facebook had purposely and routinely suppressed conservative stories from trending news, including stories about CPAC, including stories about Mitt Romney, including stories about Glenn Beck. To a great many Americans, that appears to be a pervasive pattern of political bias. Do you agree with that assessment? Senator, let me say a few things about this. First, I understand where that concern is coming from because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. Uh, I, this is actually a concern that I have and that I try to root out at the company is making sure that we don't have um, any bias in the work that we do. And I think it is a fair concern. There are people in Russia whose job it is is to try to exploit our systems and other internet systems and other systems as well. So this is an arms race. I mean, they're going to keep on getting better at this, and we need to invest in keeping on getting better at this too. Last year, Facebook estimated that 146 million Americans saw Russian-linked content during the election. Lawmakers blasted the company for not doing more to stop it, saying that companies like his have been given too much liberty and need to be regulated. I come in peace. I don't want to vote to have to regulate Facebook, but my God, I will. But that, a lot of that depends on you. Zuckerberg also admits that starting the company at such a young age may have led to its imperfections. It's pretty much impossible, I, I believe, to start a company in your dorm room and then grow it to be at the scale that we're at now without uh, making some mistakes. The entrepreneur was just 20 years old when he and some college friends built the first Facebook. Your actions could have permanently destroyed everything I've been working on. We have been working on. The drama behind Facebook's development highlighted in the Academy Award-winning film, The Social Network. I'm not talking about a dating site. I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. Facebook is now ubiquitous worldwide, with more than 2 billion users logging on each month. 
sharing everything from photos to status updates, where they work, even their religious and political beliefs. But with that growing number, there are increasing concerns about who has access to a user's personal information. One of the threats with your data on Facebook is your phone number. It might have been scraped by scammers or other malicious actors who want to use your information to spam you or to steal your identity. Part of the problem may be built into Facebook. How do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. Facebook makes billions by selling ads based on all the data they're collecting. In 2017, the company boasted revenues of a whopping $40.7 billion. Earlier this month, Facebook's chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg. It was information people had already listed on Facebook publicly. Now, that doesn't make it okay. She pointed out that Facebook is free and suggested users may need to pay to stop Facebook from collecting and using their data to sell ads. Are you actually uh, considering having Facebook users pay for you not to use that information? Um, Senator, people have a control over how their information is used in ads in the product today. I think what Cheryl was saying was that in order to not run ads at all, we would still need some sort of business model. I actually might be willing to pay. I would like to know, is there a number that you will totally protect my privacy, not use my information for any advertising, any personalized targeted stuff at all? What's the price? I'd like to know that price. Concerned about his own privacy, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak announced that he's deactivating his Facebook account, joining the delete Facebook movement. It just sort of hit a breaking point for me. Just last month, it was Facebook in the crosshairs of its own data breach. If you are looking at trying to create uh, information weapons, the, the, the battle space that you operate in is social media. That's, that, that is where the fight happens. Chris Wiley worked at Cambridge Analytica, a consulting firm which helps political candidates better target voters online. Wiley claims that in the summer of 2014, Cambridge Analytica used a third party to take data from the Facebook accounts of roughly 87 million Americans. Weaponizing the internet. Weaponizing the internet, absolutely. Two years later, Cambridge Analytica went on to work for the Trump campaign, but says it never used that data in question. The campaign itself denies using Cambridge Analytica, saying it relied on information from the RNC. Cambridge Analytica has denied any wrongdoing. Why didn't Facebook ban Cambridge in 2015? Why'd you wait? So th this, is, this is clearly one of the questions that I asked our team as soon as I learned about this is why, why did we wait until we found out about the reports last month to, to, to ban them? But for those whose data has already been compromised, the breach may have far reaching consequences. Right before Zuckerberg appeared on Capitol Hill, Facebook and Cambridge Analytica were hit with a class action lawsuit accusing the company of misusing personal information. It's unlikely that people will stop using Facebook. The social network has essentially become a utility. It not only owns Facebook, but it owns Instagram and WhatsApp and a number of other companies. The social media site says it's doubling down on security, increasing the number of employees working on security from 10,000 to 20,000. Zuckerberg's calm, careful, and contrite demeanor played well. Facebook stock increased 4.5%. I think Mark Zuckerberg is comfortable being Mark Zuckerberg. I believe Facebook is the canary in the coal mine. They're the biggest, so they're obviously going to get the most scrutiny. The hearing is adjourned. For Nightline, I'm Mary Bruce in Washington. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.